uh, which helping us on examination and analysis. Briefly about conservation process in the lab of conservation of Saruq al-Hadid artifact. Saruq al-Hadid is located 49 kilometers south of Dubai and 45 kilometers eastward from Arab Gulf Coast. It's a huge archaeological site on the, on the area. As Dr. Mansour mentioned yesterday, the archaeologists start excavated on the site to find out what happened there in the past. The photo show us the site of Saruk al-Hadid focusing on the excavation area. The excavation work discovered a large amount of archaeological artifacts that exceed all expectation. These finds were diverse in shapes and materials, so it appears to be the richest discovery of antiquities in the United Arab of Emirates. Also, the excavation provides us that the site hosts workshops for processing gold and silver, in addition to manufacturing of gemstone. On this picture, we can see the Saruk al-Hadid object, which, which display on the museum after it's conserved. We can note the variety of object kind. So we can divide the Saruk al-Hadid object into three groups. First one is an organic object, including the bone objects. The second is inorganic objects, including the metal objects. The third is a composite material, includes some iron swords with bone decorated handle. A lot of Saruk al-Hadid objects are stored on controlled store in conservation labs. Almost of them unconserved until now, as we see in the picture. On the start of conservation process, I want to show you the conditions of some objects in Saruk al-Hadid collection. The most of the objects have a highly deterioration level, and it has many of damage features, as you see in the pictures here. It's chloride and many of missed parts here and fractures and iron deterioration. So the conservation process here is necessary to preserve the object from more further deterioration. Our conservation process is considered not only the preservation material, but also attempting to understand why the material, materials decay and how it's decay, and discover a lot of information that may help the archaeologists to interpretation the site and objects. We work with the themes of international code of conduct. It's a minimum intervention, maximum respect of object, knowledge of cause of deterioration, eligibility, reversibility, and stability, preventive conservation, sustainability, and documentation. Then let's talk, talk about methodology. The methodology are priorities of archaeologists, storage and display, environment condition, facilities and resource available to conserve, handling requirements. And now we start our conservation treatment, which include documentation for object before, during, and after conservation, and also documentations for all of conservation steps. Then the examination and analyzing done to understand the corrosion products and identifying the composition of materials of objects. Also, it's give us a chance to develop a suitable conservation treatment. After that, the cleaning process is a fundamental process in conservation, but here there are many of a cleaning process method, so that lead us to choose a suitable method for each object. In habitation done for object uh, to avoid corrosion, uh, process, especially we treated with a metallic object. After that, the protection layer must apply to avoid more further deterioration on the object surface. At the end, the packaging of the objects for storage or dis display is very necessary. 
There, there are a lot of a process done on the objects, but here I mentioned the basically steps we did in our conservation lab. Regarding to the huge numbers of archaeological artifacts which excavated in Saruk al Hadid site, I choose the one of the unique object as you see on the pictures here. It's, this is an incense burner with incense burner with 32.5 centimeter height. Here is the height of the incense burner. And 2.3 centimeter to 12 centimeter width and 0.5 to 2.3 thickness. And it is the copper alloy complete burner consists from two parts. The upper part is the plate, as you see here, and the stand, the second part. The second. The lower parts have a triangle shape based, as you see in the picture, this base for instance, but Incense burner, it's a triangle shape. After that, the examination and analysis was started on the burner to highlight the corrosion products. Uh, before, uh, I'll talk about this illustration for the incense burner. It's clear all of decoration lines and measurements and dimensions of it. After that, the examination and analysis for objects started on to highlight the corrosion product and the burner materials. So we did a XRF, X-ray fluorescence, and X-ray radiography and Raman spectroscopy examination. All of these analyses are non-destructive analyses. Meanwhile, they enable us to identify the corrosion and chemical composition of Berner. Now we can see the X-ray radiography photo for the incense burner. This, this X-ray radiography photo can enable us to understand the, man, the manufacturing techniques of the burner. It shows burner consists of two parts. The upper part was held in the middle, then the stand welded within. Here we can note that the techniques, it's uh, appear for us with X-ray radiography. We cannot note, note it with, uh, with normal eyes diagnosis. On other hand, the X-ray helps me as a conservator to talk my conservation dec decision because in the photo I obtained, I obtained that a burner have a highly metal core, so it leads me to go for minimum interventive conservation. The next slide, here you can note the metal core percentage which appear in the photo, the white one. That means it has a high percentage of metal core. It's not degenerated or corroded. But in focusing on the plates, we can see some of the deterioration feature as the cracks appear here. It's a small cracks and micro cracks and, and some of weak points on the edge of the burner plates. After that, we did X-ray fluorescence analysis to determine sorry, the composition of burner. The result shows that burner was made of copper alloy metal, as the table shows, is 90% of copper and 8% lead and 2% zinc. The last analysis done for burner was a Raman spectroscopy. In Raman test, we took a small sample from the corroded layer on the surface of burner. The result showing the corrosion product, uh, the corrosion is the corrosion product of copper, as shown in the table, cobrite, atronite, and paratocomite, and colonotocomite, especially chloride and oxide of, of uh, copper shows in the diagram. But we noted that all of corrosion product was located, located on the edge of the blades. That means the 
the burner is in a good condition. After that, I did all of the step of conservation on the instant burner. Now it's conserved by mechanical cleaning using a fine trimmel and scalpel, and it's inhabited by using BTA 5% percentage concentrated. After that, coated the service by paraloid B44, then waxing applied on the service. After the conservation, almost of decoration become more clear as we see in the picture here. This photo show us the decoration lines on the, on the, uh, on the stands of incense burner. And in the middle of the stand, we can note that a circle decoration with many of fine lines surrounding it. In the end, a very important step is environment study. So we studied the environment in the artifact store, and the result shows the environment was not controlled, as we see in the diagram here. And we col oh sorry, we collect we collect the data by logger, and the, the diagram shows it's not controlled. And so we start to build a suitable environment condition, and we succeed to achieve 45% of relative humidity and 18 temperature in our metal object store. And thank you. That's.